Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is that special day of the year. Yes, indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, not the day where Santa Claus has a sack full of coal, comes to your house and he hits you with that big ass sack of coal because you were walking down the street one day, you saw a girl with a nice little snow cone and then because you were mad that day, you bumped into her purposefully, roughly, she drops and starts to cry and Santa saw that. No. No, no. We have to get into something a little more wholesome than that. Just a, a, a smidge more wholesome. Which is, of course, the yearly Oricon sales ranking 2021. <laughs> That's right. A complete upheaval. A complete paradigm shift, I personally argue, when it comes to this year's Oricon sales compared to last year or the year before. And honestly, some of these may be consistent when it comes to their rise or their fall, depending on how you view things. So, let's get into it. <laughs> Number one this year is Jujutsu Kaisen JJK with 30, almost 31 million copies sold this year. Number two is Ki Metro no Yaiba aka Demon Slayer with 29 million copies sold. Number three is Tokyo Revengers with 24, almost 25 million copies sold. Then there is a huge drop off between the top three and number four, Attack on Titan with 7.3 million copies sold. Number five is My Hero Academia. The top five at seven million copies sold, right just below Attack on Titan. Number six is One Piece, also just over seven million copies sold. Number seven, a little bit of a drop off between One Piece, Chainsaw Man with 5.2 million copies sold. Number eight is Spy X Family at 4.9, almost five million copies sold. Number nine is Kingdom, AKA Wingdom, baby, at 4.6 million copies sold and then finally number 10 haiku at 4.3 million copies sold this is a gigantic change a gigantic change of pace from last year demon slayer is not number one one piece has dropped down to number six tokyo avengers comes out of nowhere <laughs> what is going on here there is a lot to digest so first things first, what we have to recognize is once again, animes matter. If your anime adaptation for your series is spot on, if it's delicious, something that even Gordon Ramsay would improve, something that Ainsley is happy about, <laughs> yeah, boy. if it's that good and it tastes that delicious to the anime fandom, then there's a very good chance that for that year and potentially years to come, your manga will outperform the rest of the class. That's just how things just tend to be. And this year is no exception to that rule. Not just with JJK, which was clearly the case with a stellar, dope anime for 2021 and late 2020. No doubt about that. But for Tokyo Revengers, WSJ Oricon on their Twitter page actually posted a layout of the yearly sales for the top 10 series. And when we go over to the Tokyo Revengers yearly sales, it is absolutely absurd. The Tokyo Revengers anime was so well received in Japan that Tokyo Revengers that wasn't even on the radar, where Tokyo Avengers in 2020 only gets 1.65 million sales. And from 2017 to 2019, in those three years, only got 1.5 million copies sold. In 2021, historic rise of Tokyo Avengers to almost 25 million copies sold. Why? It's simply because the anime was that damn good. And honest to God, the anime, I think, was really, really good for Tokyo Avengers, without, without a doubt. I watched it through and through on Patreon. I thought it was a very good show. I would say Tokyo Avengers is probably my top five anime of the year for 2021, without a doubt. It is a very good show. And Tokyo Avengers is slated for a season two, which they're saying is going to be happening around mid-2022 depending on if there's not gonna be another crazy lockdown and there's some Omicron, Percy I virus going on and we're all screwed. Hopefully, if we're all still alive by then, then there'll be a good chance that we're gonna be having a 2022 Tokyo Revengers, which means that Tokyo Revengers stay 
in not just the top 10, in the top five, may be a consistent thing moving forward for the yearly Oricon sales for who knows how many years to come. If they maintain form, then Tokyo Avengers will continue to be well received by Japan. Absolutely. Demon Slayer, of course, a huge drop off from last year, but last year was some legendary action. Last year, I don't think any, I don't think it's possible. Well, okay, let me not say it's not possible, but I doubt that any other manga could actually ever duplicate the success of Kimetsu no Yaiba. And I think JJK, see how good it was, knowing that the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero film is gonna come out relatively soon, and that's gonna probably do very, very well, and then bolster the sales of JJK, then there could be a chance here where JJK does maintain its spot at the number one. But honest to God, I agree with you. Next year, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to see Tokyo Avengers overtake both Demon Slayer and JJK to be the number one selling manga in Japan. And Kimetsu no Yaiba, I think, is gonna continue to see its downfall to where come next year, it may be around 15 plus million copies because yes, Demon Slayer season two is currently out, but half of the season, you can just completely skip because it's just the Mugen train done again. In fact, that's what I'm doing. In fact, I'm not gonna watch Demon Slayer until we actually get to the new content. So the actual red light district stuff, when that comes out, Okay, fine, now I care. Though, because of the tax situation right now with Ufotable and the, I believe it's the chairman of Ufotable, I forget his name, that situation may damper Ufotable's greatness next year in terms of the manga sale, potentially. Now, Attack on Time, I'm not too surprised about. Though, to be fair, it beating My Hero and One Piece, I thought that was pretty surprising in and of itself. But it being around 7 million copies sold, yeah, I could see why. Because Obviously, it's over. When you think about Demon Slayer and the reason why it had reached such historic numbers last year in terms of manga volume sales, outside of the great anime that came out in 2019 and the Mugen Train film that came out the year later in 2020, it's because the series had ended. And what tends to happen is that a lot of folks tend to buy the series in bulk once the series has ended. The same would apply, of course, to Attack on Titan. So Attack on Titan is over, and even the endings, the two or three or four or five or seven endings it has, whatever, people bought the entire thing in bulk now that the series is officially over. And then on top of that, season four is coming out next month in January, early 2022. And this, of course, will help keep Attack on Titan in the top 10 best-selling manga for next year, 2022. As long as the anime is good quality, and I mean more so in terms of just the animation, because when it comes to the actual substance of it, you can easily argue that Attack on Titan has more substance than someone like Demon Slayer. But because Demon Slayer is just way better animated, animation quality tends to matter more than substance. So as long as the animation itself is top notch, then without a doubt, Attack on Titan season four, part two, will be the backbone for keeping the series in the top 10. My Hero Academia, I'm not too sure because I don't follow the manga. I used to, but I don't anymore. But as far as I understand, there's a lot of mixed feelings on what's going on right now in the manga. A lot of folks like it, but then also apparently it seems to be rushed. And as far as I understand, it's because the main editor right now for My Academia is the same guy that worked on Kishimoto Samurai 8. So I'm, I'm not too sure. However, even though it seems to me that the current content in the series is getting a mixed bag, I think for the most part, people are still enjoying it a lot right now in the manga. Like I hear more good things about what's going on rather than bad things. And on top of that, moving forward for next year, I think my hero will still be consistently as good as it is given a range of one or two million copies. Because not only are we getting information that season six is gonna be dropping probably at some time next year, 2022. Again, given this crazy uh, Omicron, Omnitrix, Decepticon, whatever's going on disease. Hopefully, hopefully, again, we're also alive by then, there's a good chance that yes, in fact, season six of My Academia does come out next year, 2022. I think late 2022, which would absolutely continue to bolster the sales of My Hero Academia. Doubling back to the WSJ Oricon Twitter account, we can see here that in 2020, My Academia was around 6 million copies sold. In 2019, it was at 5 million, but in 2018, it was almost 7 million back then. So My Hero is actually for the past 
five years has been pretty consistent in terms of the sales to where it's always been around 5 million to 7.5 million copies sold every year. There's also the new My Hero movie that came out or is coming out, I believe. And then as far as I understand, what should be coming up in the next season of My Hero in the anime should be some pretty damn good stuff. All of these things will continue to bolster the sales of the volume. So the general vibe right now that I'm getting from a lot of the Japanese My Hero Academia fans is a positive vibe more so than a negative vibe. Clearly the manga sales are indicating that yes, at least folks in Japan, they're digging my hero hard right now. Pretty damn hard. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, gotta go. Now, One Piece for the first time as far as I've been on YouTube is no longer in the top five. It's number six. That's kind of wild. Now, mind you, being in the top 10 of best-selling manga is still a really, really, really good thing. Like, you got into the AFC East or the AFC West. Like, you made it into the playoffs of the NFL, and that is a really good thing. But it wasn't that long ago, a few years ago, where One Piece had a dynasty. It was definitively the number one best-selling manga at the time for years upon years. Less so like a Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Patriots dynasty, and more so like an old school Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls dynasty, just undisputed the number one. But over the course of time, the One Piece volume sales have continued to diminish. In 2014, 11 million. 2015, 14 million. 2016, 12, 17, 11, 18, 8. 2019 saw another rise again into 10 million. Then 2020 and 2021, both at 7 million. And the primary reason why, I think, ultimately speaking, is that as far as I understand, it's just simply the number of volume sales. Because of the effects of the big bad virus, there was one less volume out in circulation for the year. If the number of volume sales for One Piece is one shy of what it normally gets, that means that it's going to see a decrease of about two to three million copies sold that year. That's what tends to be the case as far as I understand. And moving forward, if we can't get enough One Piece chapters slash volumes in a year, then there is a good chance that One Piece will continue to follow this trend of having around seven plus million copies sold of the volumes. There's also a chance here that the material within the series is not that appealing to folks anymore, as some folks would argue. Some folks love it, other folks, not so much. But Wano Country is definitely an arc I was hoping a lot more from. Well, whether or not it's actually a top five or even top 10 arc of the entire series, considering its hype, I think is debatable, without a doubt, debatable. And the volume sales, you can say in a way, do indicate this. But again, this is just more so, I think personally, the number of volumes that are being produced is a little bit less, like one less than usual, which necessarily may not matter, but it does matter because that one volume can get you like two, three million sales normally for a One Piece volume. Then I think that, that does matter. So we can get more chapters in a year, which means more One Piece volumes, which means more One Piece sales for that year, which is good. And then also because of the upcoming One Piece film Red, there's also a, I think a pretty good chance that, that movie will also bolster the manga sales for the year as well, because that movie seems to be be very, to say the least, very highly anticipated. Now, Chainsaw Man is number seven, but keep in mind that Chainsaw Man has seven anime. Well, that anime drops. I think it'll be pretty damn good. A lot of folks are hyped for Chainsaw Man in the anime. The trailer looks very, very, very damn good. And I can see Chainsaw Man having a similar rise, honestly, to Tokyo Avengers. So I don't know much about the series at all. I'm gonna be watching anime only for the time being at least, right? So I think, and I'll say this, I think next year, Demon Slayer, JJK, and Tokyo Avengers are gonna be in the top five. I think it's a guarantee. Chainsaw Man, given the anime coming out, and a lot of folks are going to be expecting a very good anime, I think, yes, without a doubt, it's gonna be in the top five next year. Spy X Family, number eight, also does have an anime coming out, which I think will also bolster the sales by quite a bit. By how much, I'm not too sure. I'm really not. But the anime is gonna be done by Wit Studios and the trailer looked pretty good from what I saw. So I can see Spy X Family breaking also into the top five or at least being in like the top six next year. Now Kingdom. <laughs> Consistently 
consistently one of the greatest manga around, without a doubt, without a doubt. And this year, once again, in the top 10. And mind you, it's in the top 10 this year, despite a major fall off from last year, where last year it was in the top five. Last year it was in the top five. It blew past 7.5 million copies sold and was around 8.25 million copies sold. But keep in mind that for the manga, Kingdom was on the heels of, I would argue, one of the best arcs I've ever read in my entire life, a three year extravaganza. And to this day, does lack a foreign translation for folks outside of Japan to enjoy the kingdom greatness, which is very unfortunate, but nonetheless, even through the scans, you can just read how great the series is. And Kingdom has had an anime season three, which was much better than season one, season two, without a doubt. It was much better. It does have, I think, a few other live action movies already slated. The first one did pretty good. And on top of that, Season four of Kingdom is already green lit. So Kingdom continues the trend of greatness, even in the massive downturn from sales from last year. But the manga content that we're getting now from Kingdom is a lot better than the past arcs content. And going into next year, Kingdom may have another spike in sales because the manga content is getting even better than we're getting this year. At least I'm theorizing. It seems to be getting to a trend into a very pivotal, substantial moment for the entire series. Again, one of the best arcs I've ever read, period. Two of the best arcs I've ever read in my entire life are in Kingdom. Two of them are. And Kingdom continues the trend of greatness. With Honest to God, still not necessarily a great anime, like not even close to a great anime, unlike Tokyo Avengers, unlike JJK, unlike Yotano no Yaiba, which are bolstered very strongly by their animes. Kingdom, for the most part, relies on just the manga greatness. And with that and that, for the most part, it is in the top 10. And I can appreciate that. I really can. And then finally, Haikyuu is number 10. Haikyuu, it does, I think, make a degree of sense. It's still very popular. It's over. But, of course, the sales are still rolling through because people continue to buy the series in bulk. And honestly, there's not much more than that. Personally, there's not much more than that. Haikyuu, I think next year, I think it's almost a guarantee, it will be out of the top 10. And I haven't heard much news at all about a season five of Haikyuu. I have not, I have definitely not. So if there is no season five of Haikyuu coming out next year, then there's a good chance that next year, Haikyuu will be out of the top 10. And then something else will take a spot. We'll have to wait and see what that is. So on that note, Dramatic changes, absolutely dramatic changes to the yearly Oricon sales for 2021. Let me know your stance on the sub at hand. I'm going to catch you guys on the flip side. Be easy. Take care. Peace out. Have a nice one.